like I wasn't scheduled to do that and then all of a sudden that party would like jump in size and now I would have to and I would have to abandon whatever I was working on Heard. it happened all the time um, <clears throat> which was you know that was like one of the only things I really hated about about that was that part of the job mm -hmm. you know <clears throat> so we started um, I mean it wasn't always I, I think it was in the very beginning where they had like a charcuterie plate on um, and it was off for a long time and then once I was doing like dedicated down there like all the time um, we started doing it again and um, you know it just it became like a thing you know like the five item thing and there was you know a whole muscle and, a, and at least one salami and at least one fresh thing and, and, um, and then it you know it's it started becoming like a um, a significant there, there was a significant amount of, of of work to do to keep up with that heard you so know, it became an endeavor <laughs> yeah and so you know I think probably a year year and a half into it I, I got to the point where I had to start ordering stuff to to do charcuterie with like specifically heard heard so it wasn't like it wasn't like those two pigs that you got from this farm most of the time yeah yeah you know, okay 99 percent of the time mm -hmm. but um, I would I would definitely need to supplement things here and there yeah um, to just be able to put up um, 30 or 40 pounds of something that, that I'm not going to see for six months. We had this really interesting setup that was a, a, an original root cellar to the building that we had kind of like cleaned up and made our home for oh, sweet. kind okay. of thing, it, which made it very seasonal. Yes. In, in the summertime and even in late spring, like I couldn't put a salami in there. It, the fat would render out. Heard. You know, <laughs> I, I could keep whole muscles in there if I had gone through the the proper steps of, of um, equalizing that so that it, it, if it got above that temperature that it wouldn't get rancid. Gotcha. You know, um, so it kind of, that, that, that sort of a part of the experience <coughs> um, helped me kind of retain this perspective on the old world side of it, the old world tradition of it where you didn't just have like a room that you set the temperature. Yeah. Like you're, you're taking your cues from nature and you're actively involved with this at this point yeah. in time because of this reason. And if you need yeah. to wake up early one day to go take the shit out because it's going to be hot or it's going to rain, it's yeah, going to be too humid. Like what yeah. you got to do. Yeah. You know, and that was just all part of, all part of how I had to schedule um, my own self um, to take care of this stuff plus all of the other aspects of the restaurant. Gotcha. You know, and, um, you know, Husk was, Husk was a super hard job, man. You know, um, it was really tough. There was a lot to do. It never got easier. There was never um, less things to do, you know. And in my experience, um, there, there was a particular kind of um, attitude towards some things were like, oh, Andrew's going Andrew's to handle it. Like, he worked through it that one time. Yeah. Like, don't worry. It, now we don't have to worry about it because he's going to do it. In hindsight, do you think that's why that butcher no called no showed? I don't know. It could be. You know that he felt that same way, and he was like, "You guys are just fucking throwing everything else on me." It, it's it very well for could no be. more money. You yeah. know what I mean? It, it, it certainly could. You yeah. know, and for me, man, you know, I was that type of person, and I, I still am to a degree. I've, I've done a lot more personal work, um, but since then, but. You know, I was all that, always that person that, like, you're not going to fucking see a chink in my armor. Yeah. And, you know, I'm fucking hard, and like, yep. whatever that you throw at me is not going to... Phase me. It's not going to phase me. It's not going to make me quit. It's not going to make me complain. Yep. Like, okay, I'll eat that too. You know what I mean? I just thought that was part of it. Yes. I assumed that was part of it. After I a saw while, that being part of it. You start to implode after a while. Right. That. Yeah. So, I worked there for um, almost three years, and what made me decide that I needed to leave 
was I saw uh, it was 2016 was probably the best year that we had. Mm-hmm. We had smashed all our financial goals. Great. Sean was nominated for Outstanding Chef for Hus Nashville. Mm-hmm. Um, we had had this like really intense, wonderful group of people that had stayed with the restaurant or were in the middle of staying with the restaurant for about two years. Yeah. You know, when you have that like that crew that all stays together for that length of time, like your restaurant just is powerhouse. It just really clicks, you know, um, and you can do things that aren't, that are a little more difficult. You know? Yeah. Um, we, we were just like, and so we smashed all of our goals with sales and labor and, and, and food costs and all this kind of stuff. And then the, the following year's budget came out and all of those, we, and we killed ourselves doing it. You know, I was working 70, 80 hours a week. Um, if not more sometimes everybody else was, was all the sous chefs were, were just grinding themselves into the ground um, and the budget came out and they were all like two points under the, the next the, the next year's expectations were like two points under that yeah and I was like I knew intimately like what it took to get to this you know um, and this guy that that owns it you know, is just going to nickel and dime us into being doing more, for whatever the same. kind of restaurant generates the most revenue. Yes. You know, that, that has this banner of husk, you know, like the values don't align. Um, and I, oh, I don't want to sacrifice my body for somebody that doesn't think the same way about these things as I yeah. do. You know, I'll happily sacrifice my body and my my sanity and my happiness and my the rest of my life for that person that does get it. You know, and then we're on the same page. Yeah. Um, so I started trying to figure out what what I was going to do afterwards. Um, but it, it you know at that time I, I really kind of realized that charcuterie was was what I was most passionate about. It's the thing that I'm the best at. There's, there could be some opportunity for me to pursue this avenue um, in a different way than in, inside of a part of a restaurant. Yeah. And I started exploring that idea a lot, and, and you know, wrote some business plans and tried to get a project funded that was a you know solo Maria that had a little deli counter kind of thing. And, okay. Um, that that didn't end up. Um, panning out had like four different investors that were all on board until they weren't you know yeah and um, it was a big learning experience you know and I'm, I'm really fortunate that some of those all, well, all of those situations didn't pan out the way that they were supposed to yeah you know um, but I did I did learn a really valuable lesson about myself that like you know, hey, this is uh, this is a different thing that I can do. You know, and at the time that I decided that I was I was leaving, I got sober, like as I left uh, Hus Nashville. Mm-hmm. Again. My drinking had just progressively, really slowly at first, and then progressively um, escalated, become much more problematic. Gotcha. You know? And. For a long time, it was it was really just that camaraderie stuff again. With, yeah. With uh, you know going out for drinks at the end of the night mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um, you know, I drank alone when I was in San Francisco a lot. Yeah. Just because it was so fucking expensive, going anywhere. You know. Yeah. And then when you but, go with cooks in front of the house, people especially, they're like, "Let's go to this wine bar," and I'm like, "Dude, I, I only have sixteen dollars. That's one wine glass." <laughs> like. <laughs> Trying to get a beer and a shot. <laughs> yeah, I got some stories about that. Yeah, <laughs> tell you. Um, one of one of our favorite places to go, the Quince Crew, was um, Tiki Hut. Okay, right on Broadway. Yeah, are you, are you pretty familiar with the city? Uh, yes and no. I I have been to Tiki Hut before, so I know yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking right about. Right down the street from Qua. Yeah, and all the strip clubs in town are. Yeah, right all that's a pretty. It's, it's right around the corner. Pretty wild place to walk it's, around at two in the morning. Yeah, yeah, it can be for sure. It's wild. <laughs> um, and this place. It was one of our favorite places to go because, you know, I mean, we could walk to six different bars, you know. Um, but I think it was like the f- either second or third Tuesday of every month or Monday of every month was Metal Mondays. Sweet. And so, you know, the Tiki Hut had all the bras yep. everywhere. And like, <laughs> yeah. 
we all we'd all go in there and and and, and be getting fucking wasted on like giant ceramic pina, frozen pina coladas right. and stuff and li- like listening to death metal yeah you know it was just the weirdest shit you know but like it it all made us really happy it, like f- flaming drinks and uh, ceramic cups there's nothing like numbers. a metal at a dark the bar the <laughs> of that was just like really intense it's like we're drinking pool drinks but we're in a dingy city <laughs> <laughs> listening to death metal in this tiki <laughs> bar it's a War of the Worlds there. Man. Oh, man. And one time, um, did you ever get to know Mark Wright, who's a wine director for Saison Group? You know what's funny is uh, Josh. someone got me his information, and I'm going to do a podcast with him when I get to to that area. Please give him my absolute best. I will, for sure, 100%. Mark. Yeah. We've been talking a little bit via email, but I haven't been able to and get I hope over he there. he won't be mad at me for saying what I'm Oh, no. It's all right. I'm sure he's got a story or two about he's you. He's got a lot of stories. <laughs> there You're you go. For a fucking major treat, talking to that guy. Um, well, Mark was was known to take the cooks out every once in a while. Heard. Um, and he had a driver at, at the point when I was working at Saison um, that he paid, you know, monthly to drive him everywhere. Um, Mark party a lot, and <clears throat> so when he was going to take us out, it was it was called a bright night. You know, we were going to go have a bright night. Yeah. And he took me and Chad um, out one night. Chad is uh, in Philly now, back, back in Philly. He runs Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. Um, and to give you a little context, Chad, Chad and I, um, around this time, had been playing the dick-touching game in mm-hmm. the kitchen. You know, and so we were, we were really standoffish around each other because as you're passing you're like you're doing this yeah yeah, yeah. Just the goal was the to block yeah hit him in the nuts or or dick when they're when you're not expecting it you know <clears throat> um <clears throat> common game right <laughs> yeah so we, anyway like he takes us to this he takes us out on a bright night and we go to this wine bar this this place that was like a it looked like it was a Japanese prom for 22 year olds. Yeah. You know, everybody had ball gowns on and like fucking really nice suits. And Mark's like over here, like having bottle service. Yeah. With all of these like gorgeous people that are in full makeup and stuff. And Chad and I are in dirty t shirts. Yeah. And, you know, our kitchen shoes and, and stuff. Like, still smell. Drinking a gin and tonic. Like fish. <laughs> looking at each other. And I, I, I look at Chad and I was like, I don't, I've never felt more out of place in my entire life, you know? Like having this vulnerable moment with with my friend. And, yeah. You know, he was like, "I know what you mean." And he reaches over and fucking slaps me on the head of my dick, and it just goes right through to my balls, just radiating oh, pain. Your stomach hurts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like really took advantage of me. Just whack. and I got so angry and I couldn't move, but I was just like, "Dude, that was that was a low blow, man." We're out. Of, we're outside the kitchen. Exactly. Right now. Yeah. You know, this is this is a faux pas. Um, but yeah, I don't know why we were there. I don't know what the point was that, that Mark was taking us there. Um, but like, you know, if you were going on a bright night, you were going to to go do whatever Mark wanted to do mm-hmm. for as long as it took for you to do coke. Heard that was what was happening. That was the goal. Yeah, that was you know. Yeah, he, he would get we would get too much booze and, and like you know toot up and, and go on to the next thing or whatever. I only went on a couple of bright nights, and a few of them I don't remember <laughs> at all. But that that one that that really stuck out to me because you know I had to get like savage retribution on yeah. Chad after that. You know, as taboo as uh, cocaine <coughs> is, like when I went to up to Aspen for food and wine weekend, mm-hmm. I was so happy that people were doing cocaine still. Really, I was just like, good, good for you guys. You know, like right. <laughs> I'm not a cocaine guy. I never really you know enjoyed it as much as uh, as everybody else, but. I can be around it, and it's not really that, that big of an issue for me, but uh, I felt like it got lost for a long time. Maybe that was just a circle I was running with. It's possible. But then I was, you know, when I went to Food and Wine Aspen, it's just like fucking chef world up there. So Everywhere. every bathroom, is there's cocaine use. And I'm like, it kind of felt right at home. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm good. You know, like, we're still here, baby. <laughs> I'll tell you, Mark used to, um, at the end of service, he used to ask me, he would go through the charade of asking me for my notebook to look up some sauce. Yeah. You know. um, 
so he would stick a bag of coke in it. Gotcha, gotcha. 